Hi, and welcome back to the Batty.com channel. My name is Brian Thompson, and today we're looking at 1986 through 1989 electronic climate control. This is option C68 on your Corvette. And today in particular, we're going to talk about blend door motors. It's this thing here. Basically, I have this hooked up to uh, a test wiring harness that we use here in the shop. We have the head unit, we have a programmer, we have a blower control module, and we have the blend door motor. The blend door motor's purpose is to decide whether air goes through the heater core or not, and if so, how much air goes through the heater core. And that's really what sets the temperature of the air that's blowing out of the vents in your car. The blend door motor's purpose is to actuate or to, uh, to move the blend door itself. It's actually hooked to this servo with a linkage. When the climate control is set to 60 degrees, we should see the blend door motor in approximately this position. When we move to a higher temperature, it takes a bit to respond. This is a very slow moving motor, but uh, it moves to kind of a, a midpoint, nine o'clock, 9.30 position. When it goes full warm, we'll see the blend door motor choose somewhere around seven to eight o'clock uh, position and that's full hot. So that's what should happen. This is a factory motor and the components are working as they should. When we cause the system to go back cool, the blend door motor should travel in the other direction. The fact that it can travel in both directions means our programmer is working the way that it should. The next thing I want to show you is this new blend door motor. This is a new replacement sold by folks uh, like Dorman. It's, um, it's rebranded by some other people who, who really shouldn't be selling this part. But basically I wanted to show you what the issues with this are. The first issue that I have with it is it doesn't work. When you plug it in, a new $200 motor should work and it doesn't. Let me show you that. As we saw, the working blend door motor would have had the actuator in this position. When we went to something warmer, we would see it rotate counterclockwise. And the reality is it just does nothing. We've done some measurements of the two motors and it appears that it has uh, a potentiometer, which is uh, not the same value as the one in the working motor. The feedback wiper arm of the uh, potentiometer is not connected in any way, does not reflect in any way the position of this, uh, this arm, and the motor wires are backwards. So when the programmer commands the unit to move in the cold direction, it moves in the hot direction and vice versa. And unfortunately that causes a runaway situation so that when it gets to one of those extremes, I believe it's breaking the potentiometer. It's breaking the wiper arm from the potentiometer. Unfortunately, this is a sealed unit. There are some plastic tabs here, but I've, I've tried to open these in the past and it is, uh, it's either glued or welded from the factory and they don't open the way that the factory motors do. So I'm not able to get inside and see if the electronics are the same to see you know, what's actually happening here. I really don't know if this is, uh, if this is something designed to work with another car that, that somebody's rebranding for Corvettes, uh, improperly, or if, um, or if this is something that somebody has designed and it's just really terrible execution. But basically I, I just wanted you to see it doesn't work. Now, the second thing I want to show you is what would happen if we actually did drive the motor? This is a brand new motor. This came out of a box today. I want to show you what happens when we hook up power manually to this motor. Um, we're going we're gonna to dr manually drive the motor. We'll drive it back in the other direction. If you listen closely, it's got a broken tooth on one of the gears. So obviously it's, it's hit an extreme and stripped itself at some point. One of the problems with, um, with having the, the motor wired backwards is that um, it goes into a runaway situation. It thinks it's driving the motor counterclockwise or toward hot. And when 
the potentiometer gets worse, it drives it even faster toward hot. When the position changes to something colder instead of hot, it drives the motor even faster in the wrong direction. And eventually it hits the, uh, the extent of the travel of the potentiometer and breaks it. And I, I think that it's done some damage to the gear train here too. So I just wanted you to know about these motors. Um, I've, I've dealt with hundreds of these at this point. I've not seen a good new uh, replacement motor yet. Don't do it, it's not going to work. The only solution that we've found is to find a good used pull from a, a, a Corvette junkyard. Find an original factory part and the chances are good. If it's not good, it's rebuildable. The factory part is going to be infinitely more rebuildable than this aftermarket junk ever will be. Thank you so much for listening to the Batty.com channel. I hope this saves you a few bucks. My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Batty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends. 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.